Alright YouTube, uh, this video is going to be about the principle of emergence. I briefly discussed the principle of emergence in my video Quantum Fallacies, which I know is some of your favourited. Cheers. Uh, this one I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Um, so, what is emergence? Well, emergence implies a dynamic interaction, a relationship between lesser entities that give rise to something more complex that none of the individual entities of the system could have achieved on their own. Um, I think it's quite an important notion and I think it's almost ubiquitous throughout the universe. I mean, let's take the ant colony. I used it in the last video as an example. The actual ant nest um, is very complex. Um, the functioning of the ant colony is also very complex. And when if you looked at the ant nest, you would think that perhaps it was designed, it, it certainly looks very intricate and well thought out. But there's there's no design to build an ant nest, there's there's no construction workers there, there's no foreman ant telling the, the other ants what to do. Um, each of them just follow a, a simple rule set. And it's through this interaction that they manage to uh, create something that's far beyond the capabilities of any of them working individually. Also, when they hunt for food, um, the pheromone trails um, are a communication between the ants, which let it find out where the food is. It's not simply that there's just a lot of ants, it's how they're interacting. Um, similarly, if you look at the cells in your body, each cell um, is behaving selfishly. It's nothing more than, um, well, it's, it's not looking out for you, it doesn't know who you are. It, it wants to feed itself, it wants to reproduce but it could care less about you, but through the cooperation of, of many of these cells, the emergent property it forms benefits every member of the society, and the emergent property is you. Um, you could even break the cells down, you know, each cell can be considered an emergent property of the chemical reactions which go on, uh, chemical reactions, atoms, atoms, uh, you know, protons, electrons, and neutrons, and so on. So it's it's ubiquitous, it, it happens at every stage of complexity uh, and it's the only way really to get from one stage of complexity to the other through emergent interactions. Now this principle was sort of seen or, uh, seized by the artificial intelligence community. Um, the paradigm know, now known as good old-fashioned AI um, was mostly rule-based, it was like Oh, if this, then do this. If this, then do this. Um, it was explicitly typed into the machine, and it was very, very top-down approach. Um, information, you know, coming from somewhere higher, being put into something lesser. Whereas now, the the emergent paradigm, it's it's very bottom up. Um, the very simple blind agents interact in such a way that they can create something that none of them alone could have done. Three main sort of steps um, by the artificial intelligence community. Um, the development of neural networks. The brain itself is an interaction of neurons. There's no centralized control in the brain. There's no CPU in the brain like there is in a computer. The processing happens over the, the area of the brain. It's distributed. So people modeled that and it turned out it was a great way to uh, generalize things. It was a great way to classify things because um, computers have always been bad at classifying things. Because um, when we have to explicitly classify things, it's very difficult. Like imagine coming up with a rule set to tell the difference between a cat and a dog. Well, they both have four legs, two ears, etc., etc. If you had to do that from vision alone, it would be very hard to program into a machine. But with the neural network, the emergent property is that it's able to distinguish between the two. Um, and y you, can't, you can't tell when. It's an emergent phenomenon. It's very hard to see where, where the control is because it's distributed. Genetic algorithms also provide us with um, a way to come up with new and novel design properties. And they're used throughout industry. They have no centralized control. And an interaction emerges um, between lesser agents, which are all competing to reproduce. Um, there's also um, what's known as uh, multi-agent based systems which were used in AI when um, each agent is acting selfishly on its own behalf 
but through the interaction of them they achieve something that's far greater because when I say an agent's acting on its own behalf I don't necessarily mean that each agent is going out trying to defeat the other agents because um, something can be achieved called Nash Equilibrium where both of the agents benefit from an interaction um, but but this uh, this agent based approach not only was a, a new developing paradigm in artificial intelligence but Minsky's society of mind really reevaluated the way that many people see the nature of consciousness I'm going to discuss um, the society of mind and its implications a little bit more in a, another video hope you've enjoyed it peace